Hello again, this is Tubal Kane from Illinois. Thought I'd talk a little bit today about Morse tapers and uh, the difference between the different sizes and why we use Morse tapers and uh, really what the purpose of them is. You know, most lathes use Morse tapers, really all modern lathes use Morse tapers in both the uh, headstock and the tailstock. And on this little atlas here, we use a number, or it uses a number two Morse taper in the tailstock and then in the headstock it uses uh, a number three and we normally reduce it with this sleeve uh, down to a number two so that would be what we would put into the uh, headstock and then when you put them in there tap them with a lead hammer make sure you wipe everything clean I wasn't able to do that because I'm holding a camera with one hand but the purpose of a Morse taper is twofold. Number one, to align things perfectly. And if there's no nicks or dirt on the work or chips, you know, you're going to have great accuracy. And the other thing is that Morse tapers are what we call self-holding. That is, the taper is so gradual that they tend to stay in there. Not to say that they won't twist if there's enough torque on a drill bit. But that, in fact, is the general purpose of the Morse taper and they're also used in some milling machine spindles very few but namely I remember the index brand used a Morse taper in the uh, spindle but it was held in with a draw bar. Most Morse tapers virtually all Morse tapers do not use any other type of uh, method of holding them other than friction. As we get into larger lathes such as this clausing 12 inch they use a larger taper. I've got a chuck on here now, but under there lies a, a number three uh, taper. And uh, the spindle itself, I believe, is a number four. But in the tail stock, we have a number three. You got the drill chuck in there. And uh, one nice thing about the uh, clausing, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a slot here. I've got the quill extended and the uh, tang, this is called the tang on the end, fits into that. You've got to rotate it and you'll feel it go in and you would slap it with a lead hammer and there's less of a tendency for it to slip if, if you have, uh, you're drilling larger size holes. Most all drill presses also employ a uh, Morse taper but in some cases we have uh, step down shanks on some of our drill bits, but as you know that in the larger sizes they almost always slip. So they really are pretty much of a failure except when you're using them in a handheld electric drill. Avoid those at all costs. But uh, most larger drills come with a Morse taper. And uh, here's about a one inch bit and it has a number three Morse taper. And as we get into smaller bits they have proportionately smaller uh, tapers. This is a number two and uh, the real little ones would have a number one. They go up to number five or six also, but these are the most common sizes that you're going to run into. Now if these uh, drills do not fit into your tailstock or your drill press, use a sleeve. Now a sleeve looks like this, and this one for instance increases the taper size from a number one up to a number two, and then of course you see the tang slot here. Here's another one that uh, increases it from a, a 2 up to a 3. Now, sometimes we need to go the other way. That is, we want to uh, reduce the size. And then we use what we call a socket. And here's a socket that will hold a number 3 and one end. And let me stick a bit in there. And that reduces it rather than enlarges it from a three down to a number two. The only thing with these is that it makes the whole assembly preposterously long and cumbersome. You've got to move the tail sock back. And if there's any inaccuracies, it is uh, magnified. So really, you've got to avoid these if you, if you can. But sometimes they are a necessary evil. Reamers also come with uh, Morse tapers, and uh, not to confuse you on this, but this little reamer here has a number uh, 
one Morse taper, but it in turn is a Morse taper reamer, and you can see that it's tapered. That can be used to clean up your sleeves and your spindles if you've got burrs in there. Here's a slightly larger one, that's a number three, and it happens to be a number three here too. And uh, I think you can readily see that this is tapered. So those are Morse taper reamers. Those are handy to have around. You won't use them real often and they're too expensive to have in stock just on general principles. Now sometimes it's necessary to remove the sleeve from the drill. In order to do that you will use a drift. And these drifts come in different sizes. Uh, I like Cleveland brand, you know, major brands. Avoid the cheapies from China where you get five for a dollar or something because they're just stamped pieces of junk. But I like these good ones here. But if you look at them carefully, you're going to find out that one edge has a radius on it and the other is flat. And when you use those, the side with the radius needs to go into the round end of the tang like that. And then simply bang it with your lead or your copper or your brass hammer. If it's on, do not pound on any machines. Now when you put these back together, make sure everything's clean. You always want to wipe, wipe all of your tapers with your hand like that and then the inside with your little finger. No chips allowed. But here's a little different spin on things. These are kind of expensive, but I like these drill drifts because you don't have to use a hammer. And uh, this orange one here is pretty neat. It's made in Sweden, but it works just like this. Put them in. Again, it's got a round edge. Put it in the slot like that and just turn it, and pull it rather, and that will knock the drill out of the sleeve without doing any pounding. That's a nice little deal. A Morse taper is a gradual taper and they are approximately 5 eighths of an inch, that's 5 eighths of an inch taper per foot although it's in decimals, but uh, from, from a number two to a number three, the, uh, the amount of taper uh, varies slightly. You can look that up in your machinist book. I might be telling you a little more than you want to know about Morse tapers, but uh, remember that there are other tapers that are used too, like an R8 is used on your bridge ports, and then there's a Jarno taper, and there's brown and sharp tapers, and caterpillar tapers, and uh, different tapers for uh, different machines, but you're going to run into the Morse taper more than any, especially on the small equipment that you might have at home. Hope you enjoyed this little discussion on uh, more tapers and that it wasn't too terribly boring for you. This is Tubal Kane saying, so long for now.